So this is the wing that I'm going to be showing how to cut using dev wing foam. It's uh, like live, just sat down and starting doing it, not too much planning. I wanted to show how really uh, easy it is to use. Um, I go through it pretty quick on purpose, um, just to show how quickly you can get through things. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Let's get going. What I want to do with this video is just kind of go all the way through from making a design into dev wing foam and then cutting it out so you can see the whole process, what's involved. So I thought the FT Versa wing is a kind of a classic and simple wing. We'll just start off with that. So I grabbed the free PDF from the flight test forums and I imported that into uh, Inkscape. You could you could do all this design work on paper, um, you know, Illustrator, anything, whatever you want to do. We're just trying to get the dimensions of the plane before we jump into, into DevWing. So then I ungrouped everything, cleaned it up. Here is the basic wing. Um, I resized it uh, to the correct size. It's supposed to be, let's see here, 965 millimeters is the total wingspan. Um, and so half of that is 482. And then I uh, just, you don't have to see me go through it. I went in and got all, all the dimensions in millimeters. So wings, uh, half of the, let's see, half of the wingspan, should say four, I don't know why I typed in nine. So there's half of the panel, half of the wingspan, the root cord, the tip cord, and the sweep. How much, how far back is the sweep? So now that we have that, I'm going to move that over to my second monitor, and I'll be using that for once we're in dev wing. So in, in uh, dev foam, dev wing foam we have here, we're just going to go to projects, new project. Call this FT Versa wing. Half of the wing length, that is that 482 number. The root cord is 325. Now there's quite, I have it on expert mode. It's quite a lot of different pages, but they are things that we don't need right now. We're just going to go through the process on a super simple wing. Um, we don't need that. And it's going to be one piece of foam. So the number of panels is one. And we will just go to the next page. Uh, we're not using this page. So here is where we put in all the extra dimensions that we took. So that's correct. The sweep is 266. Oh, I should have pointed out at the beginning, I meant to, that this program, you can download it. All the programs, you can download it and fully design everything. Uh, you can't export out your files until you've um, purchased it. So you could actually follow along with this if you like. That's what I did. That's how I learned it. Uh, so sweep is 266. Um, tip cord is 154. So if I were to bring over you know, our picture here. Come on, little program. You know, we could kind of look at it and say, yep, visually that looks, that's the wing that we just made. So let's continue to the next page. Um, this would be if you decided you wanted to cut this out of multiple pieces of foam, but we don't need that, but it makes it very easy. You can just split it right here and it splits into two and it'll figure out how to make those two cuts. Uh, this page is where we're going to set the airfoils, and we will stick with the one that Flight Test used, which is the Clark Y. And for the wingtip, the same Clark Y. And then if we apply that, we can look at the 3D view. We're not going to worry about washout or anything. There is the wing. Let's see what it looks like. Yep. That looks like a Versa wing. So 
So, um, there's quite a lot of other pages here. Um, the only one that we might be interested right now, maybe, is some spars. If you wanted to cut some little holes to put some glass fiber spars or that kind of stuff. But again, not needed. We're just going to get through the process. So, that is actually the process to generate the design of the wing itself. Um, there's lots of other things about cutting out lightning holes and, you know, trailing edges and leading edges and just so much stuff. But we're just going to save, done, and we're going to now, we're ready to create the cutting file that will go to the CNC. It really is that quick. So create a foam cutting project from the selected project and save it. So we can make a right wing or we can make a left wing. So we're going to go, we would have to go through, through this process twice um, to create a right and a left. So we'll just do right. And you can kind of see an example now of the path that it's going to take when it cuts. Um, a lot of these are personal choice of what you like. Um, for instance, this, if we select that, adds a cut to split the foam shell in two pieces. It'll make a, it, it cuts in from the back automatically. What this does is look at the front here when I click OK. It adds this cut in the front, and you can see, <laughs> because this is the swept back wingtip, um, it's going to slice that foam open in front. Um, personally, that causes a lot of problem for me because once it cuts through that, it comes back on the same path to get to where it was to continue um, cutting the bottom. And going back through that, basically resawing, recutting, that that foam is not nice and fluffy anymore. It's crunchy and hard, and it just starts catching on the foam. So I like to turn that off. Um, another thing that may be on by default are these. I don't even know what these things are. These shaping blocks. I turn those off too. As you can see, there are tons of settings, and when you click on the, there's more settings. I just try and leave them alone. I just turn off a couple of them. Um, I also leave the cutting speeds default. The one thing I, I will do is apply smart kerf. So kerf is the size of the cut that it cuts. And you know what that is by tuning your temperatures and then measuring it. Uh, and what, when you click on Smart Curve, it has not only the diameter of the cut, but the diameter of the wire, and that it can auto adjust. Um, you'd, you'd have to see it in person, but this wingtip side it moves a lot slower, which means that that heat is radiating longer in one spot, which means the curve will be bigger because it's melting, because it's there longer. Smart Curve takes that into account and so it will move it a little bit away so that the same amount of energy is getting to the part of the foam that you want as up here that's moving fast. It's pretty cool. It just works. Um, let's click next. Now this one caused me some trouble. Basically it's telling you based off some numbers here, that this is the thickness of foam. Now, two inch foam is 50, so you can already see that I would need to get much bigger foam, but we can tell it, I don't want 10 millimeters down here and 10 up here. I only really need like four. And then if we tell this, make it fit, and a two inch piece of foam. So now you can see that it actually will fit in a two inch piece of foam. Um, so that's something like every project, you kind of have to play around with these settings to get it fit in the proper amount. Um, and I've even gone as low as three, like on a couple of projects I've done three, um, but we'll just try this for now. Um, this one we are, okay, so this actually is telling you how it's going to fit 
on the table. This is the left tower. This is the right tower. You can see this one is in negative space, like physically it can't get there. So we are going to optimize X and Y placement, and you're going to see these things shift forward. So what that did is it moved the foam forward to make up for that. And I happen to have a couple of 10 millimeter pieces of wood that will raise the foam off the table. So raising it four millimeters off the table, like I, that'd be just really hard. So if I just change this to 10, and if this one was we, uh, uh, not, a, not like a 50, 40, 30, I would change it to one of those just to make it easy. And then I'm going to do this. So now what that means is when I place the foam on the table, this 50 number is this distance here. So I need to make sure it's 50 millimeters in front of home. And the Y offset means it needs to be 10, 10 millimeters above the table. And that seems like a lot, maybe a lot of stuff to remember, but it's super easy in a second. I'll show you to remember how to remember. We're not using this. So this page looks kind of confusing, but I'm using dev CNC. And so to create the G code for that right wing, I just click on this file right here. And let's just make a new folder. Uh, FT. What is this plane called? I totally forgot. It is called Versawing. And we'll call this right wing. Now, there's this really convenient feature right here. And it is going to tell you the width of the foam, the length, how thick the foam needs to be, uh, the distance on the right, different difference on the left, all those numbers that we're looking at. So this file here is what makes it super easy to shape your foam and put it on the table correctly. It's one of the most helpful features of dev, dev foam. So <clears throat> let's go. Now you could print this out, but what I like to do is just make a text document. And we'll just paste that in there, and then I can actually open it on my uh, my cam computer that's plugged into the CNC. All right, so that is it as far as design. We have made a right wing. So now we'll go into my shop, and we'll pull up that file. I have it actually set up uh, with it saves into my Google Drive, and then the computer in, in my shop it will sync that same drive. So I just go there and say load to the same location, and it's there. It's it just works well for me. So I'll see you in the shop. Okay, so I've come out to the CNC. <clears throat> I've pulled up that uh, document that shows the uh, size of the foam and I've trimmed up two matching pieces using the uh, bottom. It tells me that there needs to be 333 millimeters on the left and the right, and it needs to be 50 away, which it is, and it needs to be 10 above, and I have my spacers in there. So it's pretty much ready to go. So let me show you what we do on here. Just going to hit load on dev CNC. Go find those project files that I just saved. And let's do let's do a right wing first.
and there it is so that's how it's gonna look on the table the uh, this the inner part is gonna be on that side as it shows there and the wingtip will be on the right so basically I'm gonna flip on the machine I'm gonna turn on my heat dial it in to the white foam which for me is a 1.3 and 1.35 amps at 23.7 volts that's what this Renee 41 27 gauge wire likes and I'm basically gonna hit start so uh, let me put this on the tripod and we'll get some time lapse of cutting it out And here are those two cores that we just cut. Everything came out really nice. You can even see how they match up together quite nicely. So as you can see, it's very easy to design and to cut out. And uh, definitely plan on doing some more videos to go more in depth in all the settings. It's a super nice cut. Pretty happy with that. That is a flight test wing right there. All right, see you guys next time.